Hey everyone, it's Alexander Robinson. Welcome to the channel. So today is November 3rd, and it is officially Godzilla Day. It's Godzilla Day! Ah, oh, yeah! There we go! Good job! That's right, 70 years ago today, the original Godzilla movie came out in theaters in Japan, and thus an entire mega franchise has spawned from it. I myself am a massive fan. I absolutely love the Godzilla franchise. It is my bread and butter, essentially. And I talked about this franchise so many times on my movie and TV review channel, but unfortunately, there's not enough opportunities for me to talk about Godzilla on this channel. There have been some Godzilla attractions over in Japan, such as the Godzilla Evangelion show that was at Universal Studios Japan for a while, and Godzilla The Ride, which is actually created by Takashi Yamazaki, who directed Godzilla Minus One and is directing the next Toho Godzilla movie. Can't wait for that. But that's not a lot of chances to talk about Godzilla within the world of theme parks. And in the US, there is no Godzilla representation at all. So given that it's the 70th anniversary of the franchise, and there's going to be very few opportunities Godzilla ever comes up on this channel, why don't I go over what I think could make for an amazing Godzilla theme park land? Not an entire theme park per se, but let's say a giant Godzilla land, sort of in the vein of Super Nintendo World, Wizarding World of Harry Potter, or Galaxy's Edge. So here's the criteria I have for this video. First, I'm gonna be going over the theme of the land and what the background is. Second, I'm gonna be listing the monster roster, not in its entirety, but these are the main monsters that you can find at this land. Third, I'm gonna list the attractions that I think would fit perfectly in a Godzilla theme park land. I'm not gonna be going over restaurants or gift shops and all, just the attractions. And then finally, number four, this is themed to the Toho series of Godzilla movies, not the American Monsterverse films, which I think are fun, but uh, with 70 years of Godzilla, there's just more to pull from the Japanese films. So with that said, let's get this pitch started. The theme of the land is on Monster Island, or Monsterland. Uh, G-Force from the Heisei series has set up base on Monster Island, uh, where all the Earth's monsters have been collected and are living peacefully on this land. It's not gonna be a theme set completely indoors, and the surrounding area would be a bunch of mountains full of trees, uh, to give you the impression that you're on an island. And as guests, you are basically invited by G-Force to either help maintain all these monsters, combat any forces that could take on the monsters, or just work as scientists there. Obviously, no work at all, you're just there visiting as a theme park guest, but that's the overall idea. Sort of like how at Galaxy's Edge, you're traveling through the galaxy and make a stop in Batu or in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, your muggles being transported to Hogsmeade because the spells have been lifted there. So that's the theme of Godzilla Land, or let's just say Godzilla Monster Land. So the monster roster, obviously we need Godzilla because you can't have a Godzilla Land without him. Then you have Mothra, who is the second most popular monster of the franchise. You have King Ghidorah, his arch nemesis. Mechagodzilla, his most powerful enemy, Rodan, Anguirus, Gigan, Jet Jaguar, Minya, Batra, those are all the main monsters that you'll find at this theme park. I'll list a few other monsters that you could see as cameos at some of these other attractions, but overall those are the monsters that will have key roles within this themed land. So now we move on to the attractions, and I thought long and hard on what would be the best attractions to have at a Godzilla theme park. The first attraction that I think would work really well is a Mothra stage show. So how this would play out is that the entrance is to a cave, uh, it's indoors, and the entire theater is set to look like a giant cave that you'd see on Infant Island. And the hosts of the show are the Mothra Twins, uh, and it sort of plays out like the How to Train Your Dragon show that you see at Universal Beijing, or the one that's going to be at Epic Universe next year, where you have this giant Mothra prop uh, flying across the arena, and the Shobijin, or the twins, uh, basically talk about the history of Mothra, there's a fight that she has with Batra, you have the classic Mothra theme song. So I think Mothra, considering her history and how she's more of a fantastical monster, 
that would fit perfectly for a stage show rather than an actual ride. The next attraction that I think would work is a roller coaster based off of Rodan. Now I'm going to admit right now, this is a complete ripoff of the flying dinosaur from Universal Studios Japan. And the idea for this attraction is if they do a flying coaster, you'd be underneath Rodan uh, as he's soaring across Monsterland, uh, just living his life, catching food, uh, and that would be pretty much it. Or if you don't want to just rip off the flying dinosaur completely, uh, have a roller coaster that's like a standard like Hulk coaster where you're sitting, but it's supposed to be simulating that you're flying on Rodan's back uh, rather than him carrying you across Monsterland. Again, I know it's a ripoff of the flying dinosaur and there's not a whole lot to it, but that was the best I could come up with in terms of a roller coaster theme to a Godzilla monster. The next attraction is something more for the little kids, uh, and that's Minya or Manila's uh, Play It Land. I tried to think of some sort of kitty attraction like the teacups at Disneyland or those dancing cars in Cars Land at California Adventure. But I honestly thought, you know what? Manila is more geared towards kids anyway, especially if you watch All Monsters Attack, that I think a Playland theme to this character would fit perfectly. And the play area could have little models of other Godzilla monsters. It could have murals to all the monsters throughout Godzilla's legacy. And that would be something for the very little kids to do, the ones that aren't tall enough to go on the other attractions. And you know what? Let's just say we put it right between the Rodan coaster and the signature attraction for Godzilla Monster Land, which I'll talk about in a minute, near the end of the video. The next attraction that I think could be worthwhile is a Jet Jaguar meet and greet. Uh, now, when coming up with the idea for a meet and greet, uh, I tried to maintain it within the like confines of the theme of this land. And having a meet and greet with Godzilla and some of the other monsters just doesn't really work. Jet Jaguar can at least change size. I mean, he started out human-sized in Godzilla vs. Megalon, and then he grew giant-sized to team up with Godzilla to fight Megalon and Gigant. He's also the most humanoid of all the Godzilla monsters, so... He fits perfectly for a meet and greet. And to compensate for not having an actual Godzilla meet and greet with a guy in a suit, uh, let's say there are models or statues of all these Godzilla monsters throughout the land uh, that you could take pictures with. I say it's a J Jaguar meet and greet, but really, if in the future this attraction ever wanted to bend the rules, uh, they could bring in a Godzilla meet and greet or meet and greets with a bunch of other Toho monsters. Uh, sort of like how Galaxy's Edge is set in between The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker, Yet they brought in uh, Din Djarin, the Mandalorian, Boba Fett, Ahsoka, and Sabine as meet and greet characters. So they're kind of breaking canon for the sake of like the theme park entertainment business. And if they wanted to do that with this Jet Jaguar meet and greet for other monsters, then that could be fine. But as of right now, in its like initial phase, it would be a Jet Jaguar meet and greet. And now we come to the signature attraction, the one that when you go to a certain theme park land, that's the one you have to go to. And in this case, it's going to be themed to Godzilla, obviously. He will be the star monster of this attraction. And the idea I have for this attraction is if you crossed Star Wars Rise of the Resistance with Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, but themed it to Godzilla. Here's the pitch. The entrance to this attraction is a G-Force building, uh, and let's just call the attraction Outer Space Invasion, Godzilla's Greatest Battle. Something along what the Japanese titles for Godzilla movies were like in the Showa era. And as you go through the base, there are windows uh, looking outside into the rest of the theme park, uh, but the windows have that same technology as Velocicoaster, where you see the roller coaster zip by, and then you see the raptors following it. Well, in this case, it's the same thing, but you get to see cameos from other monsters that are just cameos at that, like Baragon, Manda, Varan, Titanosaurus, Biollante. So you get to see more of these monsters, but in cameo form. So the story for this attraction is that aliens have contacted G-Force and asked for assistance because their planet is being attacked by King Ghidorah. So the aliens specifically ask for the assistance of Godzilla, Rodan, and Anguirus. So that's the pre-show. And then much like with Rise of the Resistance, you enter a mini attraction. And in this case, let's theme it to... Um, there's an attraction 
outside the United States. I don't know what it is exactly, but you sit in this giant circle uh, and the circle pretty much moves on its own uh, as there's a wraparound screen surrounding it. Uh, so that would simulate that you're in the spaceship uh, about to head off to this planet. You know what, let's just say it's Planet X from Invasion of Astro Monster and the aliens are Exaliens. Uh, so basically the setup is Invasion of Astro Monster from 1965. Uh, Anyway, you go on the spaceship, in the wraparound screen, you see the aliens transport Godzilla, Rodan, and Anguirus to Planet X, and you make it to the planet in record time. Then you're essentially watching a three versus one battle where Godzilla and friends are teaming up against King Ghidorah. King Ghidorah retreats, and then, oh no, the floor around you and the monsters collapses, trapping you all and that's where this section of the attraction ends. So you go into the next part uh, where you're inside the base of the Exaliens. You are essentially their prisoners, uh, and soon the Exaliens will use Godzilla, Rodan, and Anguirus in their effort to attack Earth along with King Ghidorah, Gigan, and Mechagodzilla. So as you're going through the Exalien base, uh, there will be windows that are actually screens where you could see Godzilla, Rodan, and Giras held prisoner uh, being tortured or being experimented on. One window, you will see the construction of Mechagodzilla. So you're eventually put into a prison cell by the Exaliens, uh, but G-Force has sent in reinforcements uh, to break us out. And this is where the main attraction starts. Uh, so it's done in the same Kuka arm technology as Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, where you board a flying escape pod uh, to escape Planet X. Uh, and much like with Forbidden Journey, it's part simulator where you leave Planet X and head back to Earth uh, and you escape with the monsters. Uh, and then the real, like, practical sets of the ride are miniature cities of Tokyo uh, with animatronic monsters fighting each other. And obviously they can't build full-size or real-to-scale animatronics of Godzilla and company because that would just take forever and they're too massive. So let's just say they're the size of the Indominus Rex and T-Rex from Jurassic World The Ride. Not to scale like the monsters are, but big enough to where you'll go, oh my god, that's incredible. So you'll have Anguirus fighting Gigan in the streets of Tokyo. You have Rodan fighting Mechagodzilla in the sky, and he's aided by Mothra, because I think it's important that Mothra shows up in this attraction as well. And then the big climax is, of course, Godzilla fighting King Ghidorah. And this has to be a practical sequence. Uh, we have an animatronic Godzilla fighting off against an animatronic King Ghidorah with the three heads moving independently, uh, the wings flapping, and there will be like lighting effects to simulate the atomic breath and gravity beams. I've seen videos of Godzilla the ride, and that's a pretty cool one as well. But to actually have a physical animatronic battle between Godzilla and King Ghidorah would just make for the greatest theme park attraction in the world. So Godzilla and company defeat the Exaliens, they kill the space monsters, and then you head back to Monsterland, back to the G-Force base, and that's the attraction. So that's my pitch for the main attraction at Godzilla Monsterland, and overall that's my entire pitch for a Godzilla theme park land. Will this ever happen? I highly doubt it. I This is one of those things like the cocaine bear terror tram idea where I know it's never going to happen in a million years. Uh, if it does, it probably won't happen in the United States because being based off Toho's Godzilla, it would just make more sense to have it be set in Japan. But I think if that were to happen, if Toho actually decided, you know what, let's do a Godzilla theme park or a mini theme park if it's not connected to a larger one, then I think that would make for a place that I would instantly visit uh, on day one. The idea of a Godzilla theme park land is something that I would absolutely love to see, uh, and I do hope in my lifetime that happens, because at 70 years old, the Godzilla franchise is probably more popular than ever. Godzilla Minus One is considered to be the best Godzilla movie ever made, uh, 
Uh, like I mentioned before, Takashi Yamazaki is doing the next Godzilla movie for Toho. Huh? The MonsterVerse, whether you like it or not, has certainly helped with Godzilla's popularity. So why not do a Godzilla-themed land at some point? That would draw in crowds instantly, especially if it's set in Japan. And I think the ideas I have for the attractions are just perfect. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching and sticking with my crazy love for Godzilla. If you want to hear me talk more about Godzilla, you can go check out my movie and TV review channel on YouTube. Just today, I uploaded a review for Godzilla the series based off the terrible Roland Emmerich movie. But if you're not a subscriber to this channel, make sure to subscribe to it and hit that bell button to get a notification when a new video comes out. Don't forget to like the video. And if you enjoyed my pitch for a Godzilla themed land or you yourself have any suggestions on what a Godzilla themed land could be, let me know in the comments below. And if you want to follow me elsewhere on the internet, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Letterboxd, Threads, and my movie and TV review channel right here on YouTube. I'll see you guys in the next video, but until then, have a good day, take care, safe travels, and long live the king of the monsters.